Hey, this is chapter 10, Counting Methods and Probability. We're going to be covering the entire chapter in this video. So, this first section of chapter 10 is titled Counting Principles and Permutations. This should be a T. Now, the counting principle is basically the concept of if we have an event that occurs m ways and another event that occurs n ways, to find the combined ways they can occur, we do n times m. Or more specifically, if one option has three choices and another has two, to find the total number of choices we have, we multiply two by three. So permutations are used to find out how many different ways we can do something. So how many different ways can we arrange A, B, and C? Well, there are six permutations of those letters. These are, these are our six permutations. We can apply the counting principle to this permutation by saying that there are three choices for the first letter, two remaining for the second letter, and finally one for the final letter. So the number of permutations is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. Now as you can see here, this is the formula for finding a permutation. The n is n factorial and is read as 3 to factorial if it's a 3, and that basically means 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the second section of chapter 10 is combinations and the binomial theorem. So combinations are similar to permutations except that the order does not matter. So we have a selection of R objects from a group of N objects. And when finding out how many different ways we can combine these, we're not going to matter, excuse me, we're not going to worry about the order. So the formula for a combination is N factorial divided by the quantity N minus R factorial times r factorial. So moving on to our second part of the section, this is the binomial theorem, which states that a plus b to the n has the form of the combination of n with 0, following this pattern in which the, um, the powers of a are, are decreasing and the powers of b are increasing. Next, let's talk about Pascal's triangle. So generally, Pascal's triangle is composed by taking the numbers ahead of your next number and adding those two together. So we have one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, one plus three is four, four plus six is 10, three and one is four, three and three and six. That's how we create Pascal's triangle. So we use Pascal's triangle to expand our binomial theorem. So say we have a plus b squared. This is the same thing as a plus b times a plus b. And this becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This, these have the coefficients of 1, 2, and 1. You can see here that the 1, 2, 1 can be found in this row. So accordingly, if we were to cube a plus b, our coefficients would be 1, 3, 3, 1. So we would have a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Next in this chapter is probability, which is the likelihood of an event. The odds can either be in favor or against that event happening. And we have two types of probability in this section. We have experimental probability, in which we take the number of trials where A occurs and then put it over the total number of trials. Geometric probability is what it sounds like. It's using the ratio of lengths, areas, volumes, or other problems that involve geometry. Section 4 of chapter 10 is titled Probability of Disjoint or Overlapping Events. So overlapping events are those that are compound events in which the events of A and the events of B are overlapping. They share events. So this is a compound event. Now disjoint, or also called mutually exclusive events, 
are not overlapping and have no outcomes in common. So once again, overlapping events have outcomes in common, whereas disjoint events do not. Finally, section 5 is titled Probability of Independent and Dependent Events. Independent events are those that each event does not influence the other. So for example, we have coin tossing. You can toss a coin 50 times and get heads every time. But the 51st time, you still have, you have the same odds of getting heads or tails as you did any of the other times. Just because you had 50 times previously you got heads doesn't mean that the 51st time is necessarily going to be tails. Now, dependent events are the opposite. They, um, they rely on the outcomes of previous events. So drawing cards, if you drew three cards from a deck of, um, say you just have five cards and you drew three, you only have two remaining. So your chances of drawing a certain type of card is reduced because you only have two. So drawing cards.